somebody here from Indiana who loves the Lord. He was saved and filled with God's spirit and called into the gospel ministry. And 40 years ago, he became the founding pastor of a church that everybody likes to preach in, including me. Pentecostal Cathedral, Church of God in Christ in the city of South Bend. Uh, some 12 years ago, he took that superb congregation and built a new facility valued at approximately $2 million, where he continues to shepherd the Lord's flock in that city. Um, he has distinguished himself in his secular life for over 50 years as the director and owner of Alfred Mortuary in the city of South Bend. He has served as a district superintendent of the C.H. Mason district. He's been invited to be at the prayer breakfast for the President of the United States, President Obama in Washington, D.C. Bishop Alfred has been married for 51 years, Sister Mary Alfred. They've been blessed with two daughters and one son and scores of sons and daughters in the ministry. He has served with distinction in the work of the Lord step by step. He was a son under the leadership of the late Bishop C. E. Bennett and then under Bishop W. O. Blakely. He continued to serve under Bishop Dupree, and most recently his predecessor, Bishop Milton Hall, until six years ago, where he was elevated to the high and holy office of the bishopric, and for the last six years he has served as God's servant over the jurisdiction of Indiana North Central. He's going to bring an inspirational message at this time as God will give him grace and as our hearts will receive. Why don't you say, God bless? No, everybody, say, God bless Bishop Alfred. Well, let's give the Lord praise because he is worthy of the praise. I never take any of his glory, for the glory belongs to the Lord. Certainly we give honor to our esteemed presiding bishop, Bishop Blake, the first and second presiding bishop, and to the general board, to the board of bishops, our esteemed leader, Bishop John H. Shear, and the entire College of Bishops. To our saintly general supervisor, Mother Willa May Rivers, the first lady of our church, Lady May Blake. To our, my own supervisor of women, Mother Emma Rose Sanders. And to uh, my lovely wife, as they have said of 51 years, Mary Harold Alport. She's sitting right in front of me, and uh, I was going to describe her as the lady in red and black, and there's red and black all around her. Just wave your hand, Sister Alfred. God bless you. To my daughters and my son, and to all of the constituents of Indiana, not only Indiana North Central, but all of the jurisdiction of Indiana that said that we're going to be there to pray for you. God bless you. I want to just read one verse. I had several that I wanted to read to preempt it, but I'm just going to read the one verse, the 18th verse of the Gospel of St. Luke in the fourth chapter. It reads, like this, the Spirit of the Lord is upon me because he hath anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. 
He has sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to preach deliverance to the captives, and to set at liberty them that are bruised. And I want to use for our thought today the value of your anointed assignment. In our lesson text, we find Luke's account of the anointed assignment of Jesus Christ. But let's look at the sequence of events. Jesus had just come down from his wilderness experience. How many of you know that before you can be anointed, you will have to go through a wilderness experience. Now, a wilderness is a dry and barren place. How many of you have been in a dry and barren place? Actually, some of you are in the wilderness right now. The wilderness is that place where you feel isolated. You may belong to a church full of folk, but you yet feel all alone. You're in a desert-like place. That's the wilderness. Well, I've come to warn you that when you have an anointed assignment, folk may not understand you. But be encouraged with the fact that there is value in your anointed assignment. The children of Israel went through the wilderness for a period of 40 years. Some of us don't want to stay in our wilderness 40 days. All too often, we let petty things annoy us such as we didn't get the recognition that we thought we ought to have gotten. We didn't get the appointment that we thought we should have gotten. And possibly you should have gotten it. But it may not have been your time. And the devil will use these times to discourage you. And to make you feel that there is no value in your anointing. But if no one else values your anointing, you've got to value your anointed assignment. Now the question is, why the wilderness? The wilderness is there to humble you. The wilderness is there to test you. The wilderness is there to prove you. And the wilderness is there to see what you are made of. I had an experience in 2010 to go to Jerusalem. And out of all of the experiences that I witnessed while in the Holy Land, the thing that impressed me so much was the fact that one morning about 6 a.m., we got on a, uh, a bus such as our Greyhound buses or a chartered bus, and we traveled for two hours on an expressway going 70 miles an hour to get from Jerusalem to Nazareth. So I was able to understand the fact that when the parents of Jesus took him to Jerusalem, and after they were on their way back a day's journey and discovered that he wasn't there, they had to turn their whole caravan around to go back to 
Jerusalem. If it took two hours going 70 miles an hour, I wonder really how long did it take them with their camels to go back. And when they found him in the temple, I, I, I've got my own little uh, thought about it. I, I felt like that Jesus kind of answered them a little sassy because he told them, well, don't you know that it is about time that I'm about my father's business? Well, I don't know what Joseph put on him. You didn't hear a word out of him for 18 years. But the Bible says that then came Jesus to John to be baptized. And as he was coming out of the water, the heavens opened up and the Spirit of God descending like a dove lit upon him. And a voice from heaven said, this is my beloved son, in whom I am well pleased. If Jesus had to obey and to wait.